Okay, welcome back. And we're still looking into operating systems and processing and memory management and all those things. So today we're going to look at different types of operating system. So we have a distributed operating system where we run on multiple CPUs, but for you as a person, as a, as a user, it just seems like one computer. So maybe at university, there might be lots of um, shared CPUs so you can do things like I've seen um, like water simulations and like tidal simulations and things at universities. Maybe for networking, computers from different sites, and it just means you've got a lot more data, a lot more resources available. Then you've got embedded, which you'll be used to from the GCSE, which is where it might be uh, a system that's within another system, like um, a GPS system in your car, a point of sale system, an ATM, um, other bits for your car, washing machines, all those kinds of things. And then multi-user operating system is where multiple pe uh, people, multiple users can connect and operate on a single operating system. We've also got real-time operating systems, which is where the operating system has to give a response in a guaranteed time frame. For example, um, in a self-driving car or in something in a hospital. So as we've already said, um, that the operating system manages communication with the hardware. Now a distributed operating system can coordinate the processing across multiple computers, but you don't know that. All you know is that you've logged into, let's say, Windows Server or something, and that's getting all of those um, resources from multiple computers. We can then run that program, or whatever it is, and get the data, the data from all the other computers. And it could be memory, it might be a piece of hardware, it might be process time. And then that's all distributed and coordinated together by the operating system. Then we've got a multitasking operating system where a single processor can appear to do more than one thing simultaneously by scheduling, like we looked at in the last video. So it could be reading a document, whilst browsing the web, listening to music, whilst all your background processes are going on. And it's just switching between them as and when it needs to. Then you might have a multi-user multitasking system where um, you might have a really powerful computer called a mainframe which is one really powerful computer and lots of computers connect to it. An example of that uh, might be some of the mainframes made by IBM or they had for some, for some time, I know they still do, but they had um, a quantum CPU that you could, you could play with and things like that. Um, and you all get a time slice where you can use a bit of the CPU and it's sort of cycling through each terminal as and when they need that CPU power. You've got mobile operating systems, which is a specialized operating system used for uh, phones such as your ARM processors um, to allow your phone to essentially be a computer as we know it now and that's pretty much it really really short one that one and um, make sure you run through the video again make sure you know those different types because you're gonna get asked lots of different things on there usually they're asking about real-time or multi-user operating systems but they can ask you about any of those please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video